Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. Does your 2005 Polaris Ranger do this? Let's see what we can do to fix this problem. Okay, on the driver's side of the vehicle, you have your battery. And then over here, you have your starter solenoid. And then you have your bus block, which ties all your circuits together. And then you have your electronic ignition module. The on the back side of the dash is where the ignition switch is located. As with both th most things electrical, you're going to want to determine if they're the state of charge of the battery. And just looking right here, we can see that we're over 12 and a half volts. So our battery should be good. To see how our battery handles loads, what we can do is, is we can take our two terminals or our starter solenoid here, and we can short these together. And you can see that we can get our starter motor to turn. Now on our passenger side of the vehicle we have this consolidated electrical box. This basically has the master relays and most of your other electrical contacts. It's got your voltage regulator. Uh, it, it's, it's basically just about all of your electrical functionality for this particular UTV is contained within this box. The connectors themselves are pretty easy to disconnect. You just lift this up and out of the way, and then depress this tab, and you can access this one connector here. Now, feeding this connector is straight from your bus block here on two different pins, and this is going to have voltage on it constantly. There is a fusible link that's in the harness, and if the fusible link is bad, it's going to inhibit the flow of power to this connector and subsequently to this master box. Now using either a test light or a multimeter, we're going to see if we've got power through that fusible link off of the bus block that runs to this connector. And the pin, and this is the clip on top, is going to be the upper right hand one. And you can see we've got power here, so that means that our master module is being fed power from the battery. Now we'll remove our second connector on the back side of the module. As such, and now we're going to see if our ignition switch is providing closure. So go back to your key and just turn your key to the on position. So in checking this connector, we want to see if we've got continuity while the battery's on between the second pin on the top from the left, or from the right, excuse me, and the second pin from the left. And we should have continuity between these two pins and that will tell us that our ignition switch is working in the on circuit. As you can see, we have continuity across those two. Now we're going to go ahead and turn off our ignition. And as you can see, we have no continuity between our two terminals of interest. So this demonstrates that our ignition switch, or at least the on side of the ignition switch, is working correctly. So considering that the system itself, that most of the functions are integrated into this particular module, our next order of operations is to go ahead and replace this module. At this time, go ahead and disconnect your battery terminal. Now using this offset quarter inch driver and a T25 Torx bit, we're going to go ahead and remove our module. Now reversing the process, install your new module, ensuring that the part number label is facing up. Once you've replaced your module, go ahead and reconnect your connectors. You have these little plastic locking tabs on either connector. The other one you'll have to get from underneath the dash, but go ahead and reinstall those. And those ensure that it stays in a locked position. Reconnect your battery. Now to seat it in here, turn your key to the on position. You can see that your check engine light illuminates. You can see that your switch illuminates for your two-wheel drive and you can also see that your shift indicator is functioning. So let's place our foot on the brake and start it up. And 
and we're good to go. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.